So I have these simple but incredibly effective habits to thank for the fact I'm able to stay focused, allowing me to perform to the best of my ability and really excel in my job. The habits I'm gonna share are in two sets. The first three allow me to stay deeply focused while I'm working. The second three really then prepare me outside of my work time to maximize my energy, mental clarity, and motivation. And together, these habits really have been the key to when I've been working long hours. So let's dive in. Habit number one is to time yourself to distraction. So if you've ever watched another productivity video, which you probably have if you're here, you will know that multitasking is bad. Cal Newport in his book, Deep Work, have gone over all of the many, many studies showing that effectively when we multitask, each time we change task, we have to get over this activation energy hump, i.e. when you start a new task, your brain has to get in the zone. And if you regularly change between tasks, you constantly have to expend energy, which effectively makes us less productive. And the best technique that I've picked up to combat this constant task switching, distraction from phone, looking at notification, replying to email, is one that I picked up from the awesome Mike and Matty over at Cajun Koi Academy, which is to set an upward timer where you effectively start the timer on your phone, maybe put on do not disturb, and then I just get to work and see how long it takes for me to get distracted. Whenever I then glance over at my phone and realize I've only been focused for three and a half minutes, I then get back to it. I don't count that as like needing to read start the timer, I just get on with my work and stay focused. And I create this kind of competition with myself of how long can I go without losing focus. I've always found techniques like the Pomodoro a bit too restrictive in that if I count down from 25 minutes and I'm still in a state of flow, I kind of want to continue working and enjoying that state of flow. So set the timer, put your phone on work or do not disturb mode, maybe put on an app like Endel or your favorite YouTube lo-fi music playlist and just get in the zone and work. And I've been doing this for a couple of months now and as a productivity YouTuber, I've genuinely been so shocked by how poor my focus has got and constant distraction at work. And so it's been a hugely welcome technique. My personal best is currently one hour, 15 minutes. So give this a go. Drop down in the comments how long you manage, whether it's three minutes or three and a half hours and make me look bad. I think you'll be really surprised how effective such a simple technique is. The second habit is to set personal deadlines. So Hofstadter's law states that things always take longer than expected even when we take into account this law. So if I think a task is gonna take an hour and I give myself 15 minutes of contingency time, the task inevitably ends up taking an hour and 45 minutes. The Sydney Opera House, they built in loads of contingency time for, giving a generous four years to complete the project. It took 14. I think this law is particularly dangerous when we're working really long hours. So if you're working a 14 hour day and a task has taken two hours longer than you thought it would, I think by the time you get to 1 a.m. it's like, oh, well, I'm up this late anyway. Like what's the point in stopping? I might as well just spend a bit longer on it. And I think that's a really dangerous position to get into. You can kind of get into a habit of working really long hours even when it's not necessary. So to avoid this unhealthy expansion of work, I find it really helpful to set personal deadlines for myself that are different to the actual deadline. So if today is Monday and if you're given a task to complete by end of the day on Thursday, you think it's gonna take around five hours, I would recommend, if at all possible, setting yourself a personal deadline of tomorrow evening, Tuesday evening, and giving yourself maybe a three hour window in which to do it. Get that piece of work done way in advance of the actual deadline so you reduce stress on yourself, you avoid hostatus law and you really force yourself to focus on getting it done to meet your personal deadline. The beauty of this is that you avoid work just expanding into Wednesday night, for example, before the deadline, just spending longer and longer trying to perfect this thing. So often I've found that the longer I spend on something, I really get such diminishing returns on the time I'm spending on it and it actually often makes the end product worse. And second, this gives you a little bit of distance between when you first complete the task and when you then, over the next day or two, go to look at it, re read your work and you will almost certainly find areas to improve. It's almost like rereading an email after you just sent it and spotting errors, except in this case, when you've set a personal deadline, you haven't yet sent the email so you can make those corrections. The third habit is the plan to work in waves. So when you're sat down and you're blocking out your day, try to think about your day as kind of having these waves, these peaks of energy and focus. And you need to try and balance having some very 
significant peaks in intense work where you're really focused on the task. But between those, having slightly shallower peaks where you're maybe doing less intense work. And you should also obviously be making sure there are some troughs where you're having breaks. Although there isn't tons of scientific consensus around this, Cal Newport suggests that deep work is only possible for around four hours a day. And I think from my own anecdotal experience, it's probably true that your mind is really in flow, it is probably only possible for maximum maybe five or six hours a day. When you're planning your day, you should also think about what you're doing when based on your chronotype. So in Daniel Pink's book, When, he talks about the idea that early birds and night owls have quite different energy patterns throughout the day. Effectively, if you're an early bird, you should spend the morning doing your most focused, logical tasks. And if you're a night owl, you should leave these to later in the day, maybe around 3, 4, 5, 6 p.m. even. And I have a much more detailed video about this, so go check that out. Essentially, we want to achieve deep focus in every single single time slot when we're doing a specific task, but variety between the different tasks we allocate throughout the day. Think of this kind of like going to the gym and you don't work out just your biceps non-stop for two hours. You do a few different muscle groups and the brain is kind of the same. You need to exercise your brain in different ways throughout the day to get the most out of it. Now, before we go through the second half of the habits, I want to give a quick shout out to Menos, which Beth and I created to become the go-to brand for ambitious young professionals. We felt like athletes turned to Nike, adventurers to North Face, and young professionals to nothing, basically. So that's why we created Menos. Made from 15 recycled plastic bottles, the Menos backpack has all you need from a commuter backpack. Laptop sleeve, notepad pouch, pockets, water bottle holder. Plus, unlike top loaders, it opens 180 degrees so you can easily pack all your weekend essentials or reach for something in the bottom of your bag without having to tip out the entire contents. Menos is also for people who want to wear something that says they care about our planet. We collect 100 ocean bound plastic bottles collected by local people in developing coastal communities who are paid for their work and plant a tree with every single purchase. Our packaging is also compostable and recyclable. So yeah, to say I am an ambitious young professional, head over to wearemenos.com and get your Menos backpack now. And as a thank you for watching this video in particular, I'm gonna drop a 10% discount code down in the description, which can only be used 100 times, so go use it now if you don't wanna miss out. The backpacks are also available on Amazon Prime in the UK. Okay, the second three one minute habits are all about how I get my mind and my body in a place where it's able to stay focused physically and mentally for significant periods of time when I'm tired and under stress. And habit number four is to smile. I say this because it's so easy when you're busy, you have this constant stream of to do, I need to get through that and that and that, I need to do that, that, that and you end up moaning about life, you end up in this kind of cycle where you just need to get the next thing done to get through this period of busyness. So that, uh, eventually after all that work, you get to a place where it's less busy, it's calmer and I can enjoy that time. But right now I just need to get through this. Look, I get it. Like it's obviously inevitable that sometimes you'll be overworked, you'll be really tired and it will be stressful. And I'm not saying you should try to make everything completely jolly all the time. That just isn't realistic. But just because you are super busy right now does not mean your life has to be miserable. For me, there are two very small practical things that I focus on to try and improve my mood when I'm busy. The first of those, as the name of this habit suggests, is humor. Trying to actually make people laugh, trying to have a bit of a joke about about the situation we're in and how tough this is, being in it together and creating that communal bond. There's been so many studies that have shown laughter releases serotonin, which is the neurotransmitter targeted by most antidepressants. It makes you feel better. Laughter also releases endorphins, another of the body's feel-good chemicals, via opioid receptors, which also help calm us. When things are tough, laughter is insanely powerful and really should not be underestimated. The second practical focus is fika, which is the Swedish word for sort of like communal coffee and cake for 10 minutes. Okay, not exactly a one minute habit, but 10 to 15 minutes spent during a really tough period, having coffee with a colleague, having a laugh, showing them some silly thing from Married at First Sight Australia, just bringing some levity to the situation is incredibly powerful and can put a smile on people's faces. And if you're working really hard, what's another 10 to 15 minutes spent at the end of the day when you've made your day that much happier? Habit number five is to set a daily non-negotiable. 
just one thing that you never give up or only very, very exceptionally give up, but never for more than a day or two when you're working really hard. For me, this is time spent outside. It could be as little as 10 minutes for a quick stroll or a very quick run, but I just need to see daylight and fresh air. The final habit is to plan at the end of your day. When you get to the end of a long day working, the last thing you want to do is spend any longer working. So you're just like, I just want to run for the hills and get out of here. But just spend one to five minutes jotting down your priorities for the following morning. It one allows you to get all of that stuff out of your head, which means that you'll have a much more relaxing, clear minded evening and probably sleep better. And second, similarly to how Ernest Hemingway would finish mid sentence when he finished a writing session so that he could continue the next day from that middle of the sentence. At the end of the day, you write down those things that are your priorities while you're still in the flow of work so that the next day when you pick up that work, you can be like, ah, yeah, I remember that was a thing I was going to continue working on. And you get back into a flow much more easily. So yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do give it a like if you found it helpful and then comment how long you managed to do when you're timing yourself to distraction. And finally, go grab yourself a Menos backpack. Support me and Beth in our venture. They look absolutely awesome. Take them to work, show them off, tell your friends about them. We massively appreciate your support and I really look forward to speaking again very, very soon.